W.K. Kellogg started the Arabian Horse Center here at Pomona in 1925. He imported most of his horses from England, he imported a lot of horses from uh, the Crabbit Arabian Stud, you know, owned by Lady Wentworth. Amongst those was a horse called Racine, who became a foundation sire in the U.S. for Arabians for generations to come. <laughs> Lady Wentworth had uh, horse buyers who went all over Arabia and Egypt to import the horses to England and she had collected a large number of very high quality horses and so hence he was able to purchase some of the best Arabians in the world from that one location. Many of our horses here today, uh, their stock goes back to those original imports from the Crabbit Arabian Stud. Of course, we brought in uh, a great deal of other Arabian blood uh, to enhance these horses as well. The Arabian horse is noted for its intelligence. The breed originates in Arabia and it was bred and raised by the Bedouin tribesmen there who selected the horses for speed and uh, longevity and also their ability to carry the riders long distances over the desert. These horses then were imported and bred into practically every modern breed. 95% of the thoroughbreds today carry the Y chromosome of one specific Arabian. The Arabian's horses we work with here today are bred for performance. Uh, you can see that they work well with all types of people and all types of temperaments. You do have some horses that are what we call hotter or more energetic than other horses and they are bred for a specific performance purpose. And then we have others that are more docile that we might use for western pleasure or more casual riding. So the horses today are bred for very specific purposes, but the Arabian breed is suited to those purposes perfectly because you can breed them to many different levels of performance. It's very interesting the influence the Arabian breed has had on all the breeds. Morgans, standard breds, there was a particular sire that became uh, one of the founding sires of the standard bred breed. They were interbred with other horses from all over the world to produce a number of these different breeds like Lipizzaners and Andalusians. They all go back to those Arabian breeds. It's interesting, uh, the Arabians valued the mare lines and they named their horses according to the mare lines. So they thought the mare was much more important than the stallion. As we go back in the records, uh, they didn't even keep records on who the stallions were. They only kept records on the female genealogy. So that's how important the mare lines were to the, the Bedouin tribesmen where the, where the Arabians began. And we really didn't get the infusion of the Arabian breed into the other breeds until the English colonized Arabia and Egypt. And they said, wow, these are really some great horses. And they would go back and offer them uh, money for these horses and then they'd import them to England and set up breeding farms. And then from there, they got exported all over the world. And still, breeders will go back to Arabia or Egypt and purchase Arabians from that original stock and infuse it to the stock they've been working with for years and years. The two things about the Arabian that strike me as unique from all other horse breeds are their intelligence and their heart. It's really soft. It's a girl. It's a girl. She's not mine. She's a single by an eye rider. She's your favorite.